everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. This video, as with the rest of the series, represents the condensed version of fairly long Twitch live streams. So this was originally a four hour live stream. I hope you appreciate the editing. And here we have the launch of an SLS with my little shuttle mice carrying the RS-25s. And on this launch we will try and bring back one of the shuttle mice to see if that works out. Again, this series is mainly about testing systems, as far as I'm concerned. And what we're launching here is Skylab, because I wanted another station except for ISS as a destination for tourists in this install. So Skylab 2 is an option. This is not going to be a Skylab 1 anymore. And uh, this is Raider Nick's Skylab from the Skylab mod by Raider Nick. And we lost one of the solar panels right when we brought it out to the launch pad, actually. Those uh, fairings really cut it close there. Anyway, um, so yeah, but that's, I guess, I decided to run with it because it was realistic because uh, Skylab lost one of the solar panels, but that was Skylab 1, so it's complicated. Um, yeah, anyway, so we, d we have lost a solar panel. And now we are in orbit. I'm deploying the Apollo telescope mount. We've got this little docking port here. This is the real Skylab docking port, which is a drogue like the like the Apollo drogue, and so it docks with a probe, but I didn't want that. And so we'll have another module there to adapt. And we, that spinning bit is supposed to come off. That's a radiator cover, I think. So that's nominal. And we extend our one solar panel that's left. The micrometeorite shield that the original Skylab lost is still intact, so we don't have to worry about that and the patch up on that. Now, on this side, I wanted to return the shuttle mice, or at least one of the shuttle mice, but uh, we ran out of electric charge here for some reason. I guess Skylab drew too much electric charge from the vehicle. Uh, otherwise, the shuttle mice should have enough. So I turned on infinite electricity just for the purpose of being able to test the shuttle mice. So we will turn it off after the shuttle mouse that we are following down manages to... Well, we'll see its fate. Anyway, uh, we are deorbiting the external tank here. The shuttle mice, if they're fully fueled, the shuttle mice can deorbit the external tank like that. Uh, normally, I don't launch them fully fueled and I just have them have this amount that they have in them right now to control their own re-entry. And here we are coming back down through re-entry. And again, if you don't know about the shuttle mice, uh, what they are is they're meant to recover these RS-25s, which are fairly heavy engines. And uh, you can see them slightly overheating right now, the engines. Basically, the shuttle mouse is just barely enough to get the, these engines back down safely in this manner. And yeah, well, it's controllable. I mean, it's a, it did a good job. Pitch was not out of range. The aerodynamics is actually good, which is sort of amazing when you think about it. Um, I'm impressed at my own work. <laughs> anyway, um, but here we go. Uh, this is what proved to be the tough part. It has a very high stall speed, very, very high. And I've got it under manual control. And you can see me, I'm trying to uh, get the vertical speed closer to zero, but it's not happening. It's basically, it's falling really like a brick. It's really falling like a brick and we stall. Uh, when it tilts like that, uh, that's a total loss of control stall. And so, yep. And uh, no way, uh, we would have to land faster. Uh, I was aiming too low for uh, landing speed. And so maybe in automated control we could keep the pitch down until a very low altitude and then just like the shuttle sort of pitch up right at the end but we'd have to touch down at maybe 130 meters per second is what we're looking at with that which is much higher than the shuttle. The shuttle ha uh, touched down at like 90 meters per second. So anyway a shuttle launch here and this is to bring up Unity uh, well Unity 2 I guess to Skylab 2 and so Unity will be our docking module and will adapt from the little Skylab docking port to a more regular docking port. Uh, on one end there will be a docking port that the shuttle can dock at and then we have also common berthing mechanisms for other modules. So launching Atlantis on this mission. We also have two tourists, MLT-18 and Durlaf, who uh, wished to stay on Skylab. Actually, I, I don't always know whether they actually 
paid for it or whether I forced them. Uh, it's, you know, once they're part of the program, they're part of the program. That's how it is. Anyway, here the shuttle is making orbit. Well, not full orbit. Uh, external tank disposal situation, whatever you want to call it. And there's Unity there. It's just a regular Unity, same as we've got on the ISS. Uh, but we are going to put it on Skylab this time. And I've got two of my little tugs to help place it. I'm not going to use CAD arm to try and place. Actually, well, I mean, so the way Unity was placed on the ISS, the CAD arm put Unity on the shuttle's docking port, and then the shuttle docked to Skylab, uh, to uh, the uh, Zari and the case of the ISS. That actually might not have been such a bad idea compared to what happens. You'll see. It took a lot of fuel to rendezvous for reasons unknown. I think I was probably distracted during live stream. A lot of times I do things less efficiently during a live stream because I'm chatting away with the audience. Like maybe this maneuver might have been done a little bit better. Uh, the Unity module had a little boink against the other tug there. That was probably not nominal. Uh, well, to control it properly, we really do need two tugs, so... Here's the other tug going out, and then we maneuver it. Shuttle hang by. Skylab right there. Skylab does not have its own major propulsion systems. It has small orientation thrusters and a reaction wheel. That doesn't have anything to change its orbit, which of course led to its demise. So here we are, placing Unity with all its docking ports, which is what we want. You can see the little uh, Apollo probe to match with the Drogue. The probe is what they had on the command module, the Drogue is what they had on the lunar module. And the little tugs go back into the shuttle bay. But the problem is we don't have a whole lot of fuel because I didn't rendezvous very efficiently. And when I try to dock, we're really cutting it close here. And I fail to appreciate the fact that we don't have crossfeed between the forward RCS tanks and the rear RCS tanks. And so as we get close, uh, you can see it says zero delta V down there, and it looks like we ran a few. We ran a few in the rear RCS pods, the ones with the OMS engines attach, attached. So the forward RCS is still firing, but the rear aren't, and so the whole thing is imbalanced, and I had to do a very hasty retreat here backing ourselves off with the thrusters that were available. And so, yeah, that was a bit of a failure on my part, but obviously we couldn't continue with docking or trying to dock. I wanted to dock the space shuttle to Skylab just to see what it would look like. I wanted the, the sight of it, so time for a refueling mission. So we're launching an Atlas. Don't ask me why, but we're launching an Atlas V with five boosters from Kuru with an HTV. Uh, a shortened HTV. Uh, this HTV doesn't have the unpressurized carrier module, which is the center bit in HTV. It just has the pressurized part and the propulsion module, and I think the control module. And we're carrying in the HTV just fuel again, just like we did with the one in the previous video for ISS. And with every space shuttle, I have to figure out how to do the maneuvers efficiently. You know, each version is sort of slightly different about which maneuvers seem to be most wasteful. And so, once again, with this shuttle, uh, the Dylan Sumro shuttle, sh sh version of the shuttle in KSV 1.8.1, I'm getting used to what seems to work well for it and what doesn't. And so, when the, a maneuver doesn't work well, I'll manually control it uh, without using SAS or Smart ASS, so I just do a puff and just be patient about it. And if it turns out that a particular maneuver is one that Smart ASS or SAS do efficiently, they can hold it and turn it, uh, in that case, very efficiently, then I do that. Well, HDV doesn't have the best thrusters in the world, and so Rendezvous was botched because we didn't do it nearly in time, and so we missed the space station. Actually, missed the shuttle, sorry. We're rendezvousing with the shuttle with this. And so I have to do a re-rendezvous, which is what's going on here. And finally, I get to the shuttle. And you can see the shortened HTV without the unpressurized module there. I like the HTV because it's shiny. 
but it's not the easiest thing to work with because it's heavy having I mean, especially with the load it's heavy i've got the propellant for the shuttle locked at this point by the way i should say so it's not reading the delta v from that portion of the fuel that we're carrying and come on come on admit i've docked okay so after transferring propellant off goes the htv we deorbit that uh it's little thrusters at the bottom its main engines if you will don't have plumes and i haven't figured out how to fix those meanwhile the shuttle i wanted to dock to skylab and so that's what we're doing here well, we also had to uh, transfer our tourists, right? Uh, MLT and Durlaf, and tourists can't EVA. So we had to dock the shuttle to the station. But this is why I said that maybe putting Unity on the shuttle docking port and docking the shuttle like that. Well, it could have been worse, though, in that case, because if we ran out of fuel during that, uh, probably we'd have damaged something. So maybe it was best that we did it this way anyway. So, docking. Yeah, the margins with the shuttle, like any low Earth orbit vehicle, are fairly tight. So, unless they're carrying extra fuel. As designed, the margins are very tight. And docked. Alright, this negligible magnetism on these docking ports. So, transferring Durlaf and MLT-18, who are our tourists who are going to stay at Skylab. And so that was the end of the stream. I had to conclude it there, and we'll have to bring back the shuttle another time. So that was Skylab 2. We'll be building stations around the moon, and we sent a station to Mercury and Mars and such too. So there's a lot that goes on, but that'll be for later. With this, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.